Hi, my name is Laura Boyle and I'm a research assistant at Royal Holloway University of London. I'm sat here with Dr. Bethan Davies uh, in the Department of Geography's courtyard at Royal Holloway University. Dr. Davies, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. So my name is Bethan Davies and I'm a glaciologist here at Royal Holloway. Uh, I specialise in how glaciers are responding to climate change both today and in the past and I have done some of my work has been in Antarctica. Wow, so you've, have you been to Antarctica? I have been very privileged to go to Antarctica three times. Three times, wow. So are all your experiences on the three different times the same or are they all different? They were quite different. Uh, two of the times I went south, I went on a research vessel. I was deployed deep field from the research vessel. The third time I went south, I flew directly to Rothera Research Station on the Antarctic Peninsula and then was deployed by aeroplane deep field. So I've had the whole experience. <laughs> How do you get to Antarctica? There are different ways depending on which country you're departing from. For the UK, there are a couple of main routes. The first route is from the Falkland Islands. Okay. So to get there, you'll normally go to Bryce Norton, which is the RAF base, and fly there yeah. via the Ascension Isles, uh, directly into the Falkland Islands. Or you can get to the Falkland Islands by flying to Santiago in Chile, mm -hmm. down Chile, and then across to the Falkland Islands from there. Once you're in the Falkland Islands, you're either uh, picked up by one of the ships, yeah. and then you cross the Drake Passage by ship, or you can cross the Drake Passage by aeroplane. So British Antarctic Surveys is a Dash 7, it's quite a big aeroplane, and it shuttles backwards and forwards across the Drake Passage, taking people into Antarctica. It's like a long distance aeroplane. Okay, and it's, it's quite a, uh, a rough ride, isn't it, going through the Drake Passage on a boat, isn't it? It is, it is. Those currents are really strong, the winds are really strong, and that makes really big waves. Quite and, seasick then. Yeah, yeah, everybody gets seasick. I, I, didn't, I don't think I ate for three days, <laughs> so I, was, I felt rather poorly. I felt better though because even the experienced sailors were feeling poorly. So it's, yeah, yeah <laughs> unusually, unusually rough. But then once you're on the continental shelf and you've got the icebergs around, it's much calmer and you can spend a lot more time out on deck. Nice. Not locked up in your own cabin. <laughs> How long do you spend in Antarctica? It really depends what you're doing. Uh, if you are a meteorologist, you might go to one of the bases and stay there for 18 months wow. and live there as a sort of permanent permanent person. Yeah. Um, because I'm a glacial geologist and I'm studying the rocks and the sediments, it's not very helpful to be there in the winter. <laughs> no. So I only go for maybe two or three months at a time. Uh, other people may go for shorter or longer periods, depending on what they're trying to achieve. What do you mean by deep field? So when we go to Antarctica, there are a number of bases around, around Antarctica. We've got several around the British Antarctic Peninsula, for example. And a research base, they're operated all year round. There is a lot of people there, a lot of people there to keep it working, like plumbers and carpenters and engineers and doctors and all sorts of people, as well as scientists. So they run the base. And it's used as a hub, the science that happens at the base, but then people also go deep field. Mm -hmm. So when I go deep field, I mean, I'm in a tent. <laughs> I might be a long way from the base. You know, it took several hours to fly there in the aeroplane. And we're just on our own, just the three or four of us coping on our own. We have these pyramid tents. Right. And they've got, they don't have zips because they get filled with snow. So they've got a little porthole that you tie together with string. <laughs> um, and then you live inside this this tent and that's your that's your house. So you'll sleep in it, you'll eat in it, you cook in it. And maybe you'll have two or three people in these tents. In a small tent or are they big tents? They're pretty small. Oh, okay. Yeah, you get to know each other pretty well. <laughs> um, so we sleep on, if you're sleeping on the snow, then your bed would be a board, right. then on top of the board something a bit like a yoga mat, mm -hmm. then on top of that something a bit like an inflatable sort of thermarest type thing, okay. then a sheepskin, sheepskin rug, <laughs> and then probably a double layered sleeping bag. So it's like a sleeping bag inside another sleeping bag. So it's quite a lot of layers. <laughs> it's cold in Antarctica. Yeah. How cold is it? 
depends where you're going, but it could easily be minus 10 or minus 20 degrees below zero wow. in various parts of the Antarctic Peninsula or yeah. further inland in the summer. Wow. What do you eat? What do we eat? Um, dehydrated food. So, okay. Yeah, very different to what you might eat on base. Yeah. You're eating boil in the bag, rehydrated ration packs, dehydrated food, dehydrated peas. I just never really got used to that. <laughs> Definitely not a life of luxury. Well, it, I mean, it depends what you define as luxury. I mean, you're in this beautiful yes. environment. You're probably the only people there. It's yeah. pristine and untouched. But yeah, it's it's not hope cuisine. No, 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 no. <laughs> so we spend a lot of our time when we're camping in Antarctica making water. It right. is the main thing we're doing when we're when we're awake and in base, which means cutting snow, yep. taking that into your tent, melting it, and then either drinking it or cooking with it or putting it into a water bottle. And then that goes into your sleeping bag <laughs> to keep you warm as a hot water bottle. Wow. Yeah, because <laughs> any water left out overnight will freeze. Mm-hmm. I see. If you're on the research base, you eat really well. Nice. There is a chef. Um, the chefs are normally really good. They might make <laughs> bread every day, uh, they've got all the normal things that you might eat, uh, there's a sort of canteen, you go and you get your porridge for breakfast and bread for lunch and things. But it depends when you are in the year. Yeah. So in the summer, when you've got the Dash 7 coming over regularly from Chile or the Falkland Islands, that's regularly bringing in apples and fruit mm-hmm. and things like fresh that. Fresh food. Fresh, yeah, your freshies, right. fresh vegetables. Towards the end of the winter, when you've been isolated in Antarctica for a long time, those freshies are long gone. Not there. Yeah, no. they're not there. So it's, you know, you're relying on tinned food, dried food, things like that. Right. Okay. Because you can't grow anything in Antarctica? No. No? No. Everything there has to be carried there from the UK or from wow. Chile. Interesting. How do you go to the toilet? Well, on the base, it's all plumbed in, very comfortable. If you're deep field, you're living in a tent, then it's a bit of a different matter. Yes. Obviously, Antarctica is a pristine environment. Yes, of course. The last thing we want to do is make any pollution. Yeah. Anything that we take in, we take it out again. Yeah. So we have little tents with a drum in, and everything that goes in comes comes out. out. (laughs) Yeah. So we don't we don't want to make any mess in Antarctica. So we're very careful not to leave anything behind and that includes human waste. So sometimes you're deep field, sometimes you're at the base. Are you anywhere else in Antarctica? Are you do you ever go on boats or anything? Yeah, else? so there are research ships, there is a couple of royal research vessels operated by the UK mm-hmm. and there's also some navy ships as well that operate in Antarctica. And these ships are what we call icebreakers. Icebreakers. And you can tell they're icebreakers because they're red. Right. <laughs> icebreakers are red. It's okay. just what they are. And they have kind of flat holes and they're really good at breaking up the sea ice. Nice. And so on the icebreaker you have all the all the people that run the ship, the you know, the captain and the crew and the officers, yeah. but then you'll also have the scientists. Right. And they will live on board the ship and they'll be working, maybe taking sediment cores from the ocean, uh, or maybe deploying remotely operated vehicles that can, you know, automated submarines that can fly wow. around or maybe surveying the animals or the wildlife or any number of different projects. So there's lots of people on board, lots of people doing loads of different things. Indeed, yeah, it's like a floating town, lots of people on it, you know, doctors, engineers, sailors, all sorts of people and lots of scientists working on different projects at different times. Oh, that's really interesting. What other recreational activities can you do in Antarctica whilst you're there and you've got some downtime? If you're on a base, you're normally pretty busy because if you're a scientist like me waiting to go into the deep field, you'll be given duties around the base because it takes everybody to make the base work. So you might be, depending on what level of skill you have and how useful you are, you might be doing tidying up, cleaning, engineering, something. You'll be given something to do. Um, But you will also have, everybody gets Mm downtime and there are things you can do like go for a walk in the local area to see the penguins and the seals, maybe you want to go skiing, so there's a lot of keen skiers, they'll take um, skins like um, on the surface of the bottom of their skis 
and they can ski uphill, wow. dip up and then ski downhill. Maybe they'll take the skidoo to tow each other up to the top <laughs> of the hill. There's quite a few keen runners who will make use of the wrong way, okay. which is always <laughs> kept snow free and they'll do laps of the wrong way. Nice. Uh, big film club. There's also always a lot of musicians. So oh, there's normally okay. a band that forms people will put on a show on a Saturday night and have a bit of a party with the band. So it's like a little community. It's a, definitely a oh, community. That's nice. That's yeah. really nice. Do you um, have a good international community in Antarctica or do the bases not really interact? The bases are very international. Oh, nice. Under the terms of the Antarctic Treaty, we have a lot of international collaboration between the bases. Okay. So we'll have people from other countries or other Antarctic programs visiting Rothera or Halley or the other bases uh, and going through them and then likewise we'll have British researchers in other bases internationally so there's a lot of international cooperation. We can also visit other bases if you're on maybe with a Navy ship to uh, see how they're getting on, make a, 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 a visit to these bases to assess uh, the, the base and we, we all do that under the terms of the Antarctic Treaty. That's really cool, that's really cool. Do you ever see any tourists? Were they there when you were there? Uh, yeah, I've seen, a, when I've been on the ships, we've seen the odd tourist ship cruising around, uh, going to some of the same places we were going. Um, Rothera will allow one or two tourist ships to come to the shore a year to see what's happening at the base. Not too many because otherwise you're overwhelmed by tourists. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, we'll see the odd tourist in, in various places in Antarctica. Well, that sounds really interesting. Okay, that's great. That's, that's This has been really insightful. So really nice to hear about your experience okay. in Antarctica. Thank you very much. Thank you.